1892, one Magic of the Gathering was first invented. Abraham Lincoln had a couple of questions for Richard Garfield. <laughs> one of them being, why'd you shoot me in the back? <laughs> I didn't know he was going to say that. <laughs> I thought you were going to roll with it, and I was like, nope, nope. Richard Garfield's going to shoot Abe Lincoln. <laughs> Holy fuck, dude. <laughs> well, this show fucking sucks, Jace. Well, who even watched this shit? Wait, wait, wait. It gets better after the 27th season. Back in 1886, when Richard Garfield first invented magic, there was one thing going through the minds of all these scallywags and puritans of that era. Why is this shit so damn expensive? Today, on the Kitchen Table Cable Podcast, we are talking about bang for your buck. I'm Jace. I'm Derek. And I'm Rafa. <laughs> we, pulled it, we pulled another one from the first episode. Let's fucking keep going. Just Anyways, keep going. Just keep fuck going. It. Anyways, oh, fuck it. Yeah, today was, uh, we're, we only got time for one intro, and that was it. That's true. Yeah. We we did it the first take. Uh, today we're talking about bang for your buck. We're talking about budget. We're talking about budget staples. We're talking about making this game as affordable as one can. Mostly in commander. Mostly, Mostly in, commander. in commander. Mostly in commander. Yeah, modern modern is a different beast. Oh, don't want to talk about modern on this channel. Just don't like want to talk about legacy. No. Just like in the modern era. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I know where you're going. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh, Lord. So, what do we got, Derek? Uh, okay, so on today's episode, right, our first topic up to the plate, right, why it's okay to build a commander deck on a budget. No, it's not. No, it's a, it's a question. <laughs> or really, it's a statement. Why Why it's okay to build on the budget. You're a pleb if, you're, if you don't have $1,000 cards. Jace, do you have $1,000 cards? Mm -hmm. He stole them all. He's a pleb. He's a pleb. He's a pleb. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, no, why? I mean, he really doesn't because he trades them to somebody, and then the next week he asks to trade for them, mm -hmm. just consistently going down and Diminishing value. returns. Yeah, just, just diminishing returns. That's what they called me in high school. <laughs> Diminishing returns. <laughs> what? I don't even know what that means. Okay. Anyways. Okay. Why? Getting back on track. God damn it. Why is it okay to build? Why it's okay to build, build on, a on a budget? Topic number one. Topic number one. Why is it okay to build on a budget? Yeah. Okay. Pity Jace, for your thoughts. Why is it okay to? Build? See, I look at budget as a, this beast. It's like Rafa's hairy mother when she doesn't I, shave. I do want to. I mean, God damn it. <laughs> I do want to point out that Jace builds on his mom's budget. Yeah. Shut up. Specif Just like specifically. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real here, Jace. Okay. But okay. Okay. Well, I look at budget as this piece of what can I jam into my deck, right? Elaborate. What? So can what I... can I jam on my deck? Why is it a beast? Could be anything. Why is it a beast? Well, because Rampaging Baylocks is a card with 37 cents. Anyways. No relevance oh whatsoever. God, it's a cheap card, okay? I get it, but I fucked up so much. This episode ain't gonna restart. We fucked up like eight times. No, no we, we ain't we're restart. Going. We're not restarting now. We're not. We we're, don't have we, time to restart. We did a good intro, a decent. We intro. don't have time to restart. We already fucked up, <laughs> just like in episode one. So many times. So many times. Anyways, so, um, okay, I pass. I can see kind of where you're going. I kind of view budget as a challenge. Um, <laughs> I, I like that. Because yep. when I started playing, of course, I was on a budget. I was, what, right in high school. I didn't have a job. You know, I mowed lawns to get money. I didn't really get an allowance either. Right. So, you know, this playing this really expensive game. No, it's super cheap. Yeah, yeah. Super cheap to play. No. Super, probably the cheapest card game you could play. That's a lie. It's a hundred percent a fucking lie. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so but expensive. Now, now that it's I so do expensive. have have expendable income, um, it, most of it's getting going into this channel. But no. now that I have some, somebody's got to pay the bills. That's somebody's got to pay Marissa's wages. Marissa, you're doing great. Yeah, we great. don't pay Linda. Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> God damn it, Jay's Every single time, why? I hate Linda, bro. Fuck. Okay. She is my opponent. Okay. She is your rival. My opponent. Anyways, okay. budget as a challenge, because um, right now, you know, I could, if I wanted to, spend, you know, 100, 200 bucks building a commander deck, right, off for scratch, or, you know, building it, whatever I want. Oh, I thought you were going to say, like, weekly. Week, nah. <laughs> I was like, nah. damn, Rafa. <laughs> I'm not that rich. Um, but, okay, so 100, 200 dollars on a deck. I, I okay. could, very well could, 
and okay. then I wouldn't be able to eat. But ramen noodles are cheap, bro. No, I don't. I hate ramen. Why, dude? dude they're what? so good. The cup noodle. Mm -mm. Dude. If you never had lime chili shrimp, bro. Today on lime chili shrimp cast. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, no, no, but I mean, like, like on so, Maru -chan so it's really ramen it's, podcast. There you go. It's it's really easy to spend money when you have it, but yep. pacing yourself. Uh, League is a good example. We'll talk about League uh, later well, in the podcast uh, list. I think it's um, episode ten. I think it's the next episode. Next episode. I think so. And what's the episode after that going to be? No idea. I, I have the show notes out. I don't remember. I don't look at them. I, I, I look at this <laughs> shit. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we show up here and you guys go, what are we talking about today? And I'm like, it's been in the show notes for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, I could easily spend that money on my cards when I want to. and yep. so, But when I do want to spend money, I'd rather get away with finding cheaper cards or value. Value, oh, yes. Value. Um, you know, right. some, some corner case cards that don't see as much play or yeah. only see play in these fringe decks, and you're yeah. easily able to find those when yeah. you're on a budget. And sometimes I mean, if you have like a like a $40 budget, that's yeah. the most you're going to spend on this commander deck, you find a lot of cool cards that you never would have like actually For sure, right, for sure. And it's it's that balance of at some point you want to you wanna buy the... Mm -hmm. Expensive flashy cards. And right. I used to do this all the time. Uh, of course, when I had no money, is I would find like deck lists online that would play these, you know, expensive cards. Van Peer Tudor, um, Mandeville, uh, etc. All those expensive cards, and I would find budget alternatives to them in the bulk and everything. You know? No, you can't. There's no budget alternative to Mandeville. Oh yes, there is. Yes, there is. It's called <sighs> Soul Ring. <laughs> it's called it's Abyss. It's Poker. called Worn Power Stone. That's not a budget alternative. Yes, it is. It's like three dollars. Really? For really? a warm power stone, is like oh, three Jesus. bucks. Dude. Back then, it was like fifty cents. <laughs> yeah, no, warm power stone is like three bucks. Okay, I guess I. <laughs> Marissa, take that one off the list. Uh, but but yeah, so I I agree with that, right? If you're looking at building a specific commander or an idea, or whatever, and you look at lists online, because that's a good place to start. EDH rec is great, right? Stuff like that. Um, yeah. There's take also... your list and find every card and find. You know the twenty cards or so that are fifteen dollars or more, and then look for budget alternatives. And sure, yeah, yeah I yeah. can see that. There, there's also definitely like a, a mentality among, especially like newer players to commander format, that oh, I have to be playing cyclonic with my deck. I have to be playing this. Sure. This, this. But really, you don't. You can still scrape by, not scrape by. You can still flourish with your commander deck without having the twenty, thirty, forty dollar staple that you have to go into your deck. Oh, yeah. for sure. I mean, yeah, that's I mean, what that's what CDH is for. Right, is, right. Is so you're there's playing that. And I was, those and most I was, efficient cards. Go ahead. And well, I was just gonna say that, like, that's why you can sit down with a precon and still games off of people playing their fully, you know, three four hundred dollar decks or whatever. It happens, right? Yeah. May not be as consistent or anything, but it can happen for sure. And it's all about instead of looking at the price tag, the dollar amount on a deck, right? You mm -hmm. look towards the what the deck wants to do, the synergy, stuff like that. You know, and again, finding all those fringe cards or unplayable draft chaff or whatever people want to call it, you know, um, to fill those slots and, and build a more cohesive plan instead of a more expensive plan. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll talk more about League in the minute episode, but League is a prime you example. Just, just like what Rafa, just said, like right Rafa said, but some of the coolest and most innovative decks I have ever seen have come because They were of all League. mine from League. Yep. No. Yep. They were all not Derek's. Not Derek's. Uh, <laughs> No, so uh, we'll go more in depth, but with League, we have a $10 budget every week. So mm -hmm. finding ways to play more expensive just, just cards uh, versus like 30 to make it 10 cent cards, right. um, which I've definitely done, uh, is really, really interesting to see how people handle their budget. And sure. we've done, uh, in the past, we've done like $50 decks. We've done $80 CDH decks. I really decks. like my $50 deck and my $100 CDH deck. I, 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 like I still them. build them. I build they're, them on, on Mossfield. Yeah. Um, a bunch of commanders that I really want to play, but mm -hmm. like I'm one, I can't dedicate the slot to my 32 collection. Um, yeah. Or two, like I don't want to spend a bunch of money if I'm gonna actually like have this deck on hand. Um, For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, fifty dollar decks are easily playable. Fifty dollar decks are great. They play well with precons sometimes. Uh, they kind of if you yes. don't have the money to buy a precon, if you have yep. a fifty dollar deck you can on you, build. Yeah. Yep. And you can loan it out, uh, maybe even sell it to somebody. I know there's a couple of shops that I've been to or I've heard of that uh, like have like forty dollar, fifty dollar commander decks. That one in Dallas, 
when yeah, we went to yeah. the tournament. Yeah, yeah they had when like I three of them. To, when I went to Nacogdoches, there was a shop there too. And oh, all that's, shop that's right. Yeah, you, you were telling me about that. Yeah. That, uh, after league with the Toxic Dinners. No, they're not. No, oh, that's what I thought was. No, no that not. that ended up falling out. They they have decided not to do that, Jace. Mm. It's pretty stupid. Yeah. Fucking idiot. True. They'd rather they'd rather push product rather than something that they win. Um, yeah, they don't want they don't want the value to be in a deck that may not sell. Yeah, they want to just sell the cards. But okay, Anyways. so so it's important, right? In the sense that, kind of overarching, that obviously if you're on a budget, finding ways to build on a budget is most important, right? So Oops. with that in mind, that didn't go anywhere. Oh, there it goes. That was perfect. With that in mind, Marissa, the next topic. What you got? Different kinds of budgets. Different kinds Ooh. of budgets. We kind of touched on budgets. that. We kind of yeah, touched we on touched that. Touched on a little uh, bit. A little bit, but different types of budgets. Like I said, <laughs> when I first started playing Magic. I was in high school, no job, no money. My budget was what budget was $5. as little as possible. Yeah, my budget was like <laughs> booster pack costs how much? No thanks. Um, now oh. it's it's a lot more. I spend a lot more uh, more money than I'd rather say uh, on this game. Yeah, I'll never say. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll spend, never uh, tell. Two nineteen dollar Fortnite gift cards. Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> and yes. And then, uh, what? I mean, I bought what four booster boxes of Strixhaven. That was just getting it's, back it's into the so game. It's so fun. And that was me getting back okay, into the game. I guess, and it was a, such a fun set. Yeah. It was such a fun set. It was so much you fun. Any, uh, any D2ers? D2ers? Nope. Damn, four boxes? Yeah. No, wow. No Not Teferi's a single. Protection, I did open two Teferi's Protection in the okay. Sofa Archives, which that's, I sold. That's, that's, that's the thing in those boxes. It's either Protection or Demonic Tutor. Which, which I sold both of those. So it wasn't too bad. But I suppose. I still want to pick My wife up. really likes the set, so... And, and again, no. yeah, Jace put it. That was me. But getting back in the game, I had mm -hmm. I had a lot of expendable income that had just been sitting there because coming out of the pandemic, right? We had our hobbies and all that shit during the pandemic, but like, you know, there are people around that did, that didn't have hobbies to do at home before the pandemic, freaking out and finding all this shit to do. Mm -hmm. Right. So we were doing okay, but coming out, yeah, I was getting back in the game and I had a bunch, you know, a bunch of money sitting there, right? So Jace, talk, like, yeah, talk about you. talk about you. Awesome. You're you're about the same age as I was when I started playing. Um, yeah. How much money is on mommy's credit card? What? What? <laughs> <laughs> For your budget. <laughs> For my budget? Well. Talk to us about. I really hope that picked up. <laughs> <laughs> that what was what? perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, a part of my budget is. For a long and what it has been for a long time is I would draft every week. That's usually that's how I cultivated my collection as it is now. Mm -hmm. It's going to draft every week, and I think that's an experience. It's an expensive experience, but it's an experience that I is, hold uh, on. So draft is it, is, is it an expensive it's not experience? That expensive. De depending, like I said, depending. There's a there, I see it. I mean, it fluctuates. There are people who are who are like I don't think I can swing this draft. There, I've done that. Where like I've looked at my bank account and go, do I want to eat or do I want to swing a draft? Sure, right, sure. But compared to, compared like, to the like, different types of to... the game and stuff, mm -hmm. draft is decent value in the sense that if you well, it's it's a maybe lot, maybe I can... if you're like me because I I view it as fifteen dollars to go have five hours of entertainment. I got you. And I pay three dollars an hour, right? I pay fifteen dollars an hour to go to the movie theater, mm -hmm. right? So not that's you go to kind of. Huh, I'm not going to Lockhart or the movie theater. Who the fuck? I grew up in Lockhart. I don't want to go back there. Tickets are five bucks. At the yeah, movie theater. I don't. I don't wanna, why are they five dollars at the one that was like right there on yeah. 183? Uh -huh. Nobody lives there. God, man. Dude, yeah, because nobody lives there. I remember when that movie theater had two screens. Whenever it I was still does. Middle. No, it has four. <laughs> does it? Yeah. It's been a while since I've done Because it expanded right? whenever I was in high school. But anyway, uh, but so I look at it that way, so that everything that I open, it doesn't cost me. I don't look at it as I have to buy three packs, right? I look at personally, right? I look at it as I'm paying fifteen dollars for entertainment. This is my entertainment. Whatever comes out of it, cool. Now, even if you do and you go, I'm spending fifteen dollars for ten to twelve dollars of packs. I'm kind of losing a little bit of value. If you win and you get some credit and so like, right? There you go. You get promos, which you know are some value or whatever. But okay, so, it's, so it, but it's fairly inexpensive. In what you get out of it, I can see that compared to other magic stuff. True, but still with uh, different budgets, you know. Sure. Like right, with, right. with Jace in the beginning, like you said, only you know, just doing drafts every Friday so, night, and that's about it. So this is something I was really kind of pushing through this episode, and that is collection building. 
part of being an active commander group. I never once heard about that for this episode. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, well, we're gonna introduce Did you it. hear about this? We're no. Okay, right I didn't now. hear about this either. We're going to introduce it right now. Uh, Today on Jace's Corner. And it's funny, right, because there are show notes that you have access to that you can literally... I don't know how to fucking read or write, Derek. Oh <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> That is true. Okay, hey, you don't have to write them. They're on a computer or your phone. This has never once been brought up whatsoever. <laughs> okay. okay, building a collection. Okay. All right, sure. you know what? what, I'll, what I'll, I'm, I'm going to let Jace talk because okay. he doesn't talk a lot on these. Episodes. Collection what do you got? building is something I I was very, or apparently to myself, <laughs> in my little corner. <laughs> I was very keen on was collection building. That is something I've been, you know, cult- Cultivating a collection, I think that's a cultivate. Huge... You get two layup, two basics. Yeah, man, get yeah. two two collections. I, I was like, if you're gonna be an active commander player and you're gonna show up to your shop and you're gonna be wanting to build these decks, <laughs> you're gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Know. Uh, okay. Okay. So you want to build these decks? You want to build all these decks? You have all these cool ideas for a commander, but every time you go to build a deck, you look at the deck list you've made and you're like, oh fuck, this deck list is. Four hundred dollars, and I have none of these cards. So none of them. That that was me in high school too. Yeah. So I feel like a a huge part of. I'm gonna be honest. I just barely started looking at deck lists in like the last year. I just built from whatever I had at home. Well, before we didn't have uh, like EDH Rec was like really really rudimentary, yeah. and also there wasn't a lot of data on, on there. Um, we didn't have Moxfield. We didn't have Architect. All we had was Tapped Out. Pretty much. I love Tapped Out. Tapped Out, and there was like the MTG Archive or whatever it's called. Don't know. Scryfall it's... was still around. Scryfall was awesome. Scryfall! Yeah, it's a different thing, though. It's different now, yeah. yeah it's but we didn't, we didn't have any of those tools. Yeah. Uh, so you kind of had to look at deck lists on like Reddit or other other forums. Um, or just didn't. I was, or, a, yeah. I was a, literally a kitchen table player for many, many years. I mean, I followed the Pro Tour, but... And you could find those I decks. yeah, I mean, like I followed the Pro Tour, but it was ninety percent of it was just for the limited environment. I got you. I would skip a lot of the constructed, unless it I was mean, modern. I, I always basically always skipped standard. And I mean, um, there you would actually read like articles from Star City Games and the yeah. Channel Fireball, which I mean are still around today. Sure. But I haven't read an article in a long time. Yeah. Um, because all the content that I needs at my fingertips continues. But yeah, anyway, that, that was a tangent, but. Collection building is really something that is super uh, valuable when you're first getting into Magic, and it's very valuable as you keep continuing on, right? And a good way to do that is to draft, right? Another way to do that is to participate in Commander's League if your shop has one, right? My, this no, the best is... way to do it is to go to a draft and just steal all the draft chats that everybody leaves on the table at the end of the yeah. night. <laughs> there's, also, there's also that, I mean... Of course, if you're at a bigger shop, maybe it's not the best, but there's still, like, in our community, our small shop, we leave a shit ton of stuff on the table that is just right there for the taking. New player can come in, scoop, like, 400, 500 draft shaft cards off the table, and still build or, you know, upgrade their decks reasonably or add, you know, reasonable cards to their decks. How many people do we have at our drafts? 400, 500 cards. Well, I mean, when, I'm just talking damn. about specifically keeping, cra- ripping open. Okay, fucking, sure. You know, uh, that's just sure. Keep, yeah, yeah. But, but anyway, we have, we have like minimum six people that are <laughs> maximum six maximum people. Six people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but okay, yeah, uh, so collection building is viable for sure. It's very right. like I, important. I feel like the most draft stuff we get is on Sundays when yeah, the commander yeah. tournament happens. Commander mm-hmm. tournament, yeah. When there's like twenty people. In the when show. there's like twenty people, sixteen, twenty people, and then yeah. Either way, our sure. our personal experiences, but and that that also you know segues back into uh, different budgets. Uh, Derek having a full time job, managerial position. Uh, the big, the big papa, head honcho, buys two million dollars worth of cards every week, <laughs> and you can tell that my medicine is wearing off because <clears throat> I'm dying. Because you got to do one of them. Yeah, I do one of them. He's talking yeah. about his Adderall. Uh, God damn it, Jace. Oh, you're right, Jace. I can't focus. Um, so I don't know where you're going with that. I was going because. You make way more money than me. I don't know about that. I mean, I can't buy four booster boxes. I mean, <laughs> I couldn't either. <laughs> <laughs> Derek's wife? Oh, uh, man. <laughs> don't no, watch this No, I mean, right. And so, and so, honestly, as of like, it was like six, eight months ago or so, I put myself on an allowance. Mm-hmm. Right. Because, yeah, I mean. I started know, doing there's that. There's a lot of stuff going. Yeah. Now, my allowance isn't nothing. 
right? It's a fairly decent allowance. If I if I only sit there on magic, it would be great. Now, I put everything in my allowance, personally, right? So that's if I want to go out to eat or whatever, you know. But, yeah, I mean, I still spend, you know, a couple hundred dollars at least a month mm. on whatever. Um, <laughs> half of that goes to keep generally. <laughs> But um, motherfucker cracking packs all the time. But yeah, so I mean, even with that, right? It's still, if you, I mean, if you, if you think about it, kind of depending on what you do, right? My issue was I was building a ton, I was brewing a ton, I was building a ton of decks, right? You got me interested in the idea of the thirty-two deck challenge, which is now I've thrown away because fuck that shit, um, right? I was really interested in that, and so I was like brewing well, three or four decks at a time and picking up cards money. consistently, right? That's how you save money. Yeah, is just build one and then stop. Pretty much. Yeah, but like I didn't have any, so that, coming in with yeah. zero, I got to build thirty-two. That was that was definitely a thing when I first started coming to the shop. Is I would uh, I would bring like three, four decks at a time, mm-hmm. and it, that was just not I have a great not, strategy. I have not brewed or built a single deck. I brewed for Eldraine. Yeah, so that was yeah. pretty much it, right? In the last two months or so. But yeah, so I mean, with that, yeah, I was I was buying a shit ton, right? Even, you know, but the main thing is like if you get those two and three and four and five dollar cards right and you get multiples of them per deck that shit adds up real quick yeah. this is starting to sound like magic players anonymous real uh, <laughs> yeah 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 basically anyways, i probably we, need an intervention well, to be honest most of us do um but yeah different to people on different budgets you know mm-hmm. uh, i can see where jace is coming from because it's the same thing i did um I now mean, I, now like i said uh, I, I mumbled earlier that i do the 32 deck challenge because it saves me from brewing three or four decks a week Buying the cards and then... wow, you don't have thirty-two decks yet. I know. How the fuck does it save you from brewing? Because <laughs> I haven't brewed a deck in like two months. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but see, I'm OCD like that, right? So whenever you say thirty-two deck challenge, I go, oh, okay, cool. I need thirty-two decks now, right? <laughs> like I need thirty-two decks tomorrow. <laughs> you see, you're OCD. I'm uh, I'm what's the word? Uh, uh, frugal. That's hard. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> What is the word? Um, <laughs> I think it's retarded. Yeah, 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 me too. Uh, Autistic. Mommy's little uh, special. <laughs> That's what she calls me. Never mind. Um, I don't know. My brain is landing on autistic. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what you're going with. Going for. Magic players and not. Explain it. It's when you like wait to do something to the last minute. Procrastinate. There you go. Yeah, you procrastinate. I procrastinate. Yeah. Thirty-two is like the end. I'll yeah. get there eventually. Yeah, yeah but 32 like, is like when Rafa I like don't saggy, saggy. I, <laughs> God damn. I mean, at my age, my shit sags already. What the uh, hell? Uh, Come on, hang on to the floor. can't say that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I don't know. It's just I hate incomplete things. I got you. Right, so if you go, and, and that's why I latched onto it, and my wife was like, you got to calm down. And I'm like, no, no, I got to brew. <laughs> I got to brew. Right? Because, uh, yeah, this. I was like, I need 32 decks, and we need 32 decks tomorrow. Right. And so that was really, it was rough. <laughs> it was really rough. I got you. But... I've abandoned that, and it's been it's been kind of nice, literally not building and brewing for, like, the last two months. That's been kind of nice. Quiet. Yeah, My brain but, is not quiet. Right. But adding on to that, right, kind of, add, and I don't want to add to a point earlier, that, like, League is a really good way for people to learn how to build on a budget. That, yeah, that's, what and just, that's what Justin does. He doesn't build any decks outside of League. He just League I, is That's League basically decks. what I've started to do is yeah. is because we've been doing League forever. Yeah. This has become the League episode. Um, yeah. We've been doing League forever. That's basically where most of these decks came from. Every single time that I've done a League, I've made a deck afterwards except for the one that I haven't and not this one. That is true. Zevlor is, is the one that I yeah. sadly... But like do. out of the out of the that, out that of the precon out of the tin roof yeah, fell yeah. to the rain. Out of the precon, like we've had five precon. This is number five now that we're finishing up. Like I have three decks mm-hmm. from three of them, right? So yeah, I mean that's kind of it's kind of a good way. But, uh, but one. okay, take me that four. So take out your CDs. with the that's true. wait, what we did you did from a precon? In, yeah. Yeah, but I, I didn't build that shit from precon. I mean, the I know, basics and the precon. I took the. And I mean, <laughs> are there, are there I, mean I took that it? precon and turned it into an actual deck. So I'm not going to count it as two decks. I'm not going to count it as two decks came out of that. Maybe when a path just the commander came out of it. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Uh, we've, moving t- on. we've been on this topic. We've been probably on this not this topic, topic for a while. But... And the next topic that we're going to go over is a commercial break. Fuck out of here, Linda. 
Kitchen Table Cable is sponsored by Force of Will Gaming. For all your gaming needs, visit Downtown Bastrop's premier gaming store. And also by viewers like you. Thank you. And we're back. <laughs> so what were we talking about, Rafa and Derek? What did we learn during the break, Jace? Uh, well, we learned that Linda... Fuck that. <laughs> Fuck Linda, you. I'm sorry. Fucking hate Why are you, you sorry for Linda, dude? Because she's the only one we can hire. God we have Shalissa and Charissa. And we're, this is the United States. We're required to have at least two mentally challenged people on staff. And you were the only one available at first. We had to hire Linda. Oh, yeah. Does our show pass the Bechdel test? <laughs> pass the what? The Bechdel test. What is that? Two women have to speak to each other, not talking about another man. I mean... It's 2023, I mean, I'm a woman. Are you a woman? Yeah. We passed. Jace Bellerin. <laughs> Anyways, what did we learn? What are we doing? We're Let's talk about... Welcome back, everybody. Let's okay. talk about what I messed up on. On the show notes? On the show yeah, notes. Yeah, we're going to talk about flashy, expensive cards versus cheap, expensive cards. <laughs> what? That's, but really, we're going to talk about flashy, expensive cards versus cheap, Synergistic, Synergistic cards. Ooh, Synergistic Junkyard cards. Genius. Ooh. Stop with the Junkyard Genius. What is, Junkyard what is that genius, card you, Jace? And Visions of Dominance, too? What is, no, stop. We're back to this again. Lord. Junkyard Genius. What does that do, Jace? What is it? It is a three mm -hmm. mana, black, red, one generic, something, something creature. It's like a two, three. I think it's okay. a human artificer. I think it's a Probably. human artificer. Sure. It enters the battlefield, creates a tapped power stone token. Okay. And then you can pay the same as its mana cost to sacrifice an artifact or creature. And creatures you control gain plus one, plus one, and mints. This card is like 20. I mean, plus one, plus oh, and mints. Until end of turn? Yeah. That's bad. This card is like That's cute. 25 cents. Anyways, flashy expensive cards flashy versus... Flashy expensive cards versus cheap, cheap synergistic cards when we're building a deck. Let me see. Let me... Okay. That's this next. Those are flashy expensive cards. <laughs> Those are flashy, expensive cards. They're not even flashy. They're just expensive. That's true. I mean, they're kind of flashy. They're yeah. nice. Okay. Right. So when you're building a deck, especially on a budget, right? And I kind of alluded to this a little bit earlier, right? When you're deciding to, I mean, what's a good one now? I was going to use old Ellis Norton as an example, but it's $10. Now. That's true. She's it pretty used to be cheap. 40 bucks, I mean, right? you yeah. do get your bank for your buck. With uh, crater hook. Crater hook. Crater okay. $20. Right. Okay. So flashy, expensive card. Is it really? It's still out of my price range. Okay, so flashy expensive card. We want a crater hook for our deck. Mm -hmm. Instead of spending our, our and say our budget's twenty bucks. Yeah. So we can buy a crater hook or we can buy twenty dollars of anything else, right? How do we like how do you decide and how do what's that process of am I gonna buy the twenty dollar crater hook or instead am I gonna buy an in race forerunners for forty eight cents? Mm -hmm. Well what you do do nineteen dollars and fifty cents on other shit. Well what you do do instead. Is you look okay. at the bulk box and you find Lanoir, <laughs> I thought he was gonna say you looked at the bulk box and you hope somebody left a crater hook in there. Dude, I definitely done there that. Was a did that. Did a uh, what's it called? There was a risk. Seaborn Muse when when Seaborn Muse was like twenty dollars. Yeah. My friend in the bulk box. Yeah, my friend found one in the bulk box. Got it, you know, with a bunch of other cards for like two bucks. Nice. It was, it was you know, it's those stories. That, they don't really happen anymore. But, uh, I mean, Stop. you definitely look at the cards. I mean, I definitely got five Pitiless Plunderers for 20 cents. Because they were in the bulk. At... There was definitely two Ristic Studies in the bulk. That's true. Time. We did find two yeah. Ristic Studies in the bulk. Uh, th those are hard to miss. But, yeah. either way, um, basically, and this is what I did, um, my exact process when I was, you know, younger, looking at deck lists, I basically looked through... Um, the, the list found the expensive cards and asked, okay, what do they do and how can I replicate them? With a, with a, with probably a worse effect. You know, going in, you probably know that the most expensive cards are going to be the most efficient cards sometimes. Uh, other times, it's, it's really just like chase cards that are way too expensive for their own good. Like Crater Hoof. Look at Crater Hoof and say, okay, this card does, uh, you know, plus X plus X for each creature I control, gives them trample, and this thing also has haste, so it's, you know, one of those big beaters that's going to get in with the rest of your team. Okay, why do I need Crater Hook to end the game? So let me find some other effect that does that for me. Oh, Baron Overrun. Glory. Baron Glory. I was going to say Overrun. Overrun. 
It's, I mean, Crater Hoof is an overrun effect. Yeah. It's just, A, it's also on a creature, which means you can you can tutor for it. Yeah. Right? I can tutor for it, and that's that's kind of the big... And B, you can also attack as well. So Yeah, it can also attack, right? But, yeah, I mean, essentially you can, instead of just casting an overrun, I can play a, uh, what, natural order, sack my Lenoir elves no into way. a Crater Hoof and win the game that way. Yeah. Right. Uh, but you but basically yeah, you the, the, the flashy expensive cards. This this segment's pretty self-explanatory actually. It's you find the expensive cards. Though? I think it is because I the main thing that I wanted to talk about is there are some flashy expensive cards that don't have an alternative. So then right. that's when the de the the decision is hard. Nothing right? does what Cyclonic Rift does the way Cyclonic Rift does it. River of Rebuke is the only thing that is close, and it is a sorcery speed one play. Sure. That's a decent, that's a decent one, yeah. Um, the, the one that comes to mind for me is like Anointed Procession. Sure, yeah. Right, in white, there's not another card that does what Anointed Procession does. I mean, there's Madre, but... Sure, now now there who's, is, but... who's, do what? Now there is. There's now there Mondra. is, right, but, and he's just as expensive, though. Right, so if I want an Anointed Procession or I want a Mondrak, I don't have that option. Exactly. So then, what do we do? And that's why I kind of wanted to highlight the, if you're looking for cheaper alternatives, look for synergistic type stuff when you don't have an option. Well, right. in that case, like in, in that specific situation, I'd play more lords. More lords? The idea, yeah, the idea with, with Anointed Procession or Mondrake is you, uh, either you're playing something like Treasure Tokens with your Smothering Tithe that you just opened from Wilds of Hill Drain, or you're playing, most likely, you're playing tokens. tokens you're playing creature yeah. tokens. And so if you're able to generate creature tokens, that means that you just need a way to finish the game, which is making more creature tokens. Just like, okay. So, so the inverse of that is playing what, lords. Lords. Just playing more lords. The idea that your army is taller rather than wider um, is basically going to get you to the same, same direction. Yeah, that. Or if you really want to, if you want to do the, the wide effect, right, you do the one-off. Yeah, type stuff, right? Secure the waste. I love secure the waste. waste. There's a new one. Uh, secure the waste. Something crescendo. What is it from? Grand, Grand, Grand crescendo. Grand crescendo. Grand crescendo. crescendo. So good. It's Jason very good. It in his token stack and then yeah, yeah. It's, it came it's, in that it's very good. It's I mean, it's a two mana it's also a heroic dollars, intervention right? if you yeah. want it, mm -hmm. right? Or it makes but, you dudes. Um, but yeah, and so you do stuff like that, or there's a bunch of the sorcery speed ones where it's X, make X tokens, whatever. Mm -hmm. you, you end up doing stuff like that. And so it's like, I can find A, ways to make tokens if I need to, B, if, I, if, I'm, if it's just kind of value with the doubling my tokens or whatever, I, found, I find ways to make them better, and that's where we kind of go talk. And, and that's something like in the upgrades video, that like the win more <laughs> cards versus the win conditions. Um, yeah, never, that, that's, consensus, never put a doubling speed in your deck. Ooh, why? Because it's win more and it's bad. I don't like win more. I mean, in a Super Friends deck, it's a win condition. Oh. In a Super Friends deck, yeah, you all your Planeswalkers as soon as they come down. Yeah. Sure. Um, but like uh, in a plus plus some counter deck, don't I can put a Primal Vigor in any deck. That is true. I mean, I can see <laughs> not putting double entries in a, in a counters deck where you already have a bunch of counters on your things. You'd have to get it out really early. I can see yeah. that. I would play Primal Vigor in Kibo if I still had that deck. That is true. That's kind of a group piggy. Yeah. So, That's but I mean, true. but I mean, basically any, almost, almost any. I'll concede to that. Almost any card there's a qu yeah, there's, that you will there is I'd say a buy good now with a set every other month, oh, yes. there is a cheap alternative to it. There's a cheaper alternative. For Chan sure. Chances right. are, with how sure. rapid fire they're producing these sets, there's an expensive alternative that is really cheap. Like something that should be like a, the white Crater Hoof is what, 15 bucks? Uh, Moonshaker, Moonshaker Cavalry? Yeah, yeah. 15 bucks. Mm -hmm. It's really good, and you could very easily open one though. from. Uh, from a four dollar pack. I, I mean, you, de you definitely can, right? You is it's is still it playing Winota. I don't think so. I doubt it. Is it Why would it see playing Winota? It's not a human. Because it's a crater hook. It's not. It's not a human. Winota. It's not a human. Triggers one. <laughs> and but you're not going to hard cast Moonshaker Cavalry pay eight in Winota. It. If it was a human, like then, yeah. there you go. What anyway. does that have to do with anything? <laughs> well, like Mana Rocks. Mana, that's a good... Uh, uh, as, mana Rocks? As okay. Jace didn't mean it to be, but that's a good segue. Mana Rocks. You know, Soul Ring comes in every pre-con, but Soul Ring is still four bucks. Two bucks. Four bucks. Two Definitely bucks. Nine. Two Soul Rings is four bucks. <laughs> Two Soul Rings is four bucks. <laughs> and for my 32 decks, I need 16. So yeah, see? Look at it. So, you know, Soul Ring... 16 moves to two. <laughs> so, you, you could play... Um, 
I was gonna say you could play Warren Power Stone, but apparently it's three dollars. Yeah, Warren Power Stone is like three bucks. It's more expensive it, than Zomer. And, and it got a it got a list printing. Really? That's like its newest printing. Yeah, it's crazy. See, I don't know anything. But it's crazy. But yeah. Basically, so, what, our our point with this section was is that there is basically any, generally any yeah, for the most part card, there's there are alternatives there are that you can play that still fit the theme and the style of the deck what you want to do yeah. that are considerably cheaper, right? Considerably cheaper. Right. And I mean, yeah. Generally, it doesn't make that much difference. But, all right, Jace, what's the next section? Speaking of flashy, expensive cards for stupid, cheaper alternatives, Ooh, well, let's talk. We talking, we're kind of segueing on the mana basic episode. Dual lands oh, and geez. budget alt, alts. Abu, Abu, Aber? Abu, Is it Abu what? duels or Aber? What? They're having Alpha, a stroke audience? I think it's, as, people call them Abu duels. Why? Right? Alpha, Beta, Unlimited. Okay. But it's it's technically it's Aber, Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, Revised. So I don't know why people call them Abu duels. Because it's probably easier to say than Abu. Yeah, but it's still it's one, letter, one letter less. But it's the same number of syllables. And Abu Abu sounds weird. We're talking about budget. You know, we got to cut corners somewhere. We got to cut corners somewhere. <laughs> why use big word when little word do good? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, dual but, lands. So dual that dual du lands. This is something you'll see. I see it a lot on YouTube. I see it a lot on content. I see it, I see it a decent amount um, on Reddit too. Because all of these, uh, all these content creators, they make money playing games. Yep. Um, plus from streaming or whatever, and so they show up with their casual decks, you know, for for casual game, and they're dropping savannas or, and or, and, and I will say, or they have or them, or they've been playing for a very long time. There's two, but like, I know there are there are a lot of that. I was gonna yeah. use that. I was gonna use as a as an example, right? He, he builds no he builds a lot of no. He played some. He it's just not many. It's just when people when yeah. people play eight, he plays two. Yeah, right. It's kind of how it works, but. Um, but yeah, so right, that's what I was gonna say is like he builds with a lot of restrictions stuff like that. But he plays the original dual lands in his decks just because he has them. Yeah, because he's been playing since Alpha. Mm -hmm. And there are definitely right. people and there who are have people them. That do like... that. Now the majority of people haven't been and haven't opened them or traded for them or anything. They just bought them years later. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, and even more don't just don't like they they see them glistening off in the distance. The yeah. siren beating on the tin roof or whatever Jace's metaphor was. Yeah, tin monsoon tin uh, roof. Monsoon tin roof. <sighs> Right. Anyways, but dual lands are one of those big things that are to, that are really popular to fantasize about in commander oh, yeah. games or commander decks, I should and, say. But and I fucking hate it. Yeah, you know what? Because your mana base lands? should not be the most expensive thing in your fucking deck. That's what irritates me the most. I hate the fact that let's talk modern real quick, right? Most of your value, most of your cost of your modern deck comes from your land base, and your, unless you're playing burn. And but if you're not playing burn, no, no, that's that's even more. So. <laughs> uh, probably my, my mana right? base probably costs half as much as the deck. It's yeah. why our your mana base should not cost eighty percent of your deck's budget. It's insane. I hate it. I hate it. Now it should be eighty percent of your deck here on hot takes. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> that was a joke, Derek. <laughs> Stop crying. <laughs> but anyways, um, there it, we've said it in pretty much every episode at this point. It's the same thing. We've said that. At this point, with how much is coming out, there are dual lands for your deck that are reasonably priced. Very much from so. blossoming sands and to being twenty cents to overgrown farmland, which is like wait, five bucks. I forgot to hit record on you. on his phone. <laughs> what do you mean hit record? Why did you ever stop it? Uh, wait, let me check this real quick. <laughs> oh, it's recording. Jace. Why would it stop? Why would you stop it? It's never stopped. Okay, sit your black ass I down and let's keep going. Turning on my screen. What the hell? <sighs> Anyways, where was I? I had a good point. Jace is over here. So, yeah, budget alternatives to dual lands and stuff mm -hmm. from Blossomy Sands. That's a really bad one. Don't use that. Because I play Tab to Gain a Life. Yep. Fuck that shit. So good. Puts you ahead. No. Yep. No. Yep. Hey, if you there win at 41 life, you're better than winning at 1 life. Guild gate. No, it doesn't matter if you win by, what? what's the saying? By an inch or a mile. I got you, Vin Diesel. I got I'm you, Jace's mom. Winning at okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, what do you, essentially, what do you, what do you lose? You lose a couple percentage points of win percent, potentially, right? Mm -hmm. CEDH is a good example. Yeah, the reason sure, the reason they play, play them your, is is because you need your mana. You want to play all your, but realistically, worst case scenario, I spend six life. Yeah. I spend six life for my three shock lands to come into play 
untapped versus my original duels. Once I have those three, I don't really need yeah. multiple dual lands after that, right? Yeah. That so, where it does hurt sometimes is the five color ad nauseum decks. But sure. Yeah, yeah but they're uh, wrong. But then you shouldn't be playing five color ad nauseum decks because you suck. So That's true. You're going to lose at least ten life from your fetches. Yeah, you're going to lose um, multiple from your fetches, from your shocks, right? Your talisman. Anyways. And you're going to um, lose multiple from your wallet part, and your mom yelling at you for buying your fucking your underground sea again. Yeah, but yeah, is, but he doesn't his... play any dual lands. He I does. mean, he does. He borrows some. Yeah. But he himself, right, hasn't spent six thousand dollars on his lands. Exactly, and I mean, so the idea is that, like I said, your fixing is going to prioritize uh, your percentage. Sure. Hundred uh, percent. Yeah, it's just going to be way easier to fill your deck with budget duels rather than. Actual duel. Oh yeah, duels. there's there's plenty. There's tons. Go yeah. back to the land episode. We talk about a shit ton of them. Yeah. Okay. Last topic. This was Rafa's idea. Last topic. Talk about some budget commander resources. Budget commander budget resources. Commander resources. One of my favorites when I when COVID hit. I'm pretty sure this is uh, like right before COVID hit, and then this right is me after. Putting a quarter in the. So, that's I gone. It. It's gone forever. <laughs> I dropped it. Around <laughs> around the time of the pandemic, uh, Commander Quarters came out yep. and shot up really big because people were playing spell table games, they were playing games with their families and everything, and building a $25 Commander deck was really yeah, good. that's what it started out as, yeah. $25. $25 actually, Commander deck. It's not anymore, but no. that's what it started that out That was my as. first interest in Commander because I always thought it was like super like inaccessible. But then you posted the $10 Bosch Commander deck. It was $10 for a Bosch, one whole Bosch Commander deck. One, one whole Bosch. <laughs> one whole Bosch. And I was like, Bosch and 99 Mountain. <laughs> I was like, that is fucking sick. Like, the deck was cool. I was like, that is fucking sick. I want to do this. I never ended yeah. up doing it. And there had, there, had been, um, there had been deck tech channels out there. For, like, oh, yeah. The professor did uh, a couple as, uh, for as sure. well. Um, one Wage from the Banner Source also did deck tech. So I, what I really yeah. liked, that's something we could probably do as well, because I don't know. He's back now, I think. But what he did He's was back. like, yeah. Guess who's back? Uh, was commanders from like sets. He would take a set and see all the legendary creatures in that set. This was before we had 200 sets a month. Um, yeah. Or 200 legends a month. Okay. Uh, and so essentially pull up all the legendary creatures from a set? And build a commander deck around all of them. Like a, like All a, of them? Like a loose, like, 10 card. All of them? Yeah, all of them. A loose, like, 10 card list and strategies you could do. Okay, well, oh. That, okay. okay well, that's not so bad. Yeah. God um, damn. No, Man, no. I was like, I think Eldraine's <laughs> got 60 legendaries in it. Yeah. Um, uh, what? But, you know, no. there were a lot of channels out there that were just doing, like, deck techs. And like I said, that's where you look at all the deck lists and everything. I'm mm -hmm. tapped out. I hate tapped out. Um, I still like it. Sponsor us. I mean, 100%. <laughs> 100%. But you would see all, all, field now, but all, of, these, all these deck lists oh, playing uh, Chromatic Lantern when it was yep. 20 bucks. Should uh, be in Demonic day. Tutor and Lies. Yep. Um, <laughs> uh, they're, you know, just just a bunch of, like, random expensive cards because those were the staples back then. Right. And there were only so many, you know, versions out there. And so right. you would see lists being super expensive. Commander Quarters came out and started to, like, crush those numbers because... His, you didn't the, need them. Yeah, the budget you was so low them. that every that you could buy it with you know mowing someone's lawn. Mm -hmm. um, Commander quarters is really what, what like got me interested in, in uh, content actually. Uh, yeah. And deck decks is just you okay. know, it's just so cheap to do them. People were able to actually like buy the, the deck you were telling okay. them about. Well, maybe maybe we'll talk about some content ideas. I don't know. There's that. Okay. Um, and then uh, <laughs> recently, uh, there's a channel I really like, which is um, EDH deck building. Oh, I love that guy. Yeah, he builds a lot on a budget and talks about these like, um, like not corner case cards, but like sleeper cards okay. and everything, sure. like cards yeah. that are like surprised him the most from new sets and everything. Uh, and he does one of my favorite series is Underwhelming Commanders. Uh, okay, that's where he a, takes an interesting topic. Yeah, yeah. he takes these that's Underwhelming Commanders and then. I like it. I gotcha. Um, but still, you know, uh, taking these Underwhelming and rather you know pathetic kind of commanders that are like 10 cents and then building a deck around them because decks mm -hmm. weren't expensive they weren't you know using yeah because they're not gonna be nobody's yeah. playing them exactly so. um and then recently what i really liked was the pre-con challenge that people have been doing where they take 45 dollar yeah. budget 
That was, was like pre-con level commanders. That's that one of my super one of my one of my favorite channels is Grazit. Grazit MTG. Yeah. Does that super Com super cool commander mechanic? Does that also awesome mechanic, mechanic, mechanic? Does, does that yeah. budget uh, deck text as well? Also, yeah. um, but yeah, I mean, taking your he already he already <laughs> mentioned the prof, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so taking your precon and saying, okay, I have fifty dollars to upgrade this mm -hmm. precon, and that's where the idea for us let's, came let's uh, go in our it. local shop, building fifty dollar commander decks. Yeah. yeah. Do y'all have any uh, resources that y'all would look at for for budgets? Scryfall, there's a filter for below. If I can just scryfall. Oh, there is. Yeah. You yeah. can filter out like price. Yeah. yeah. EDH rec, you can filter deck list. That is by true price too. I do that as well. Um, they have a like a good like, I like four a slots case, of budgets. Case in point, right? You look up the. I remember listening to this on one of their podcasts. You look up the mono black Sadisi. Oh yeah. Yeah, mono black Sadisi. The, oh, the, 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 ex the expensive, the expensive version is like a regular deck, mm -hmm. and then you go to the cheap version, and it plays ninety six swamps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice zombie infestation. It's only got three cards. And ad nauseum. <laughs> yeah, it's got four cards in it. The most ex expensive card is ad nauseum. There's only two, mm -hmm. like two or three other fringe cards. <laughs> I love that. That's so funny. That was one um, of my like. But yeah, so that. Um, like I said, I watch I watch Grazit a lot. I I love his precon upgrade. Decks it. I mean, it helps for League too, right? Kind of get the ideas mm -hmm. of how to build, how to take a precon and build it into something that you want it to do, right? And then of course he does like specific themes for the commanders, stuff like that. I use so those you're... those for like sniper picks. Yeah, right. Because yeah, for they sure. let them do the hard work for me. Yeah, that's oh, true. Also... You watch the video and you go, oh man, I really these two cards are super sick. Throwing them in. Mm -hmm. right. So there was an era of precon design where before, because nowadays they decrease the amount of unique designs in precons. And I feel like what, I think that's just by the nature of having so many precons now. But yeah, but back in the 2019, 2018, 2017 era, there's a bunch of sleeper. Were you were you alive back then? Mm -hmm. yeah, just kidding. So it was, it was a sperm cell. <laughs> Damn. But I mean, looking back on those eras, there's a ton of cards I've never heard of before, and I'm looking at them, and I'm like, these are fucking awesome. Now this also comes to like new sets, like their commander sets are also so cool, like Visions of Dawn. God, God fucking damn it, damn it. you asshole. That cycle of cards was so bad. Um, it's not great. Dominance is probably the best one. Um, not, uh, I don't know what the other one is. Drowned Dreams isn't the second. Uh, no, no, it's not. That's it's not in, the card. It came from that, that spirit deck. deck? Oh. Sure, is a spirit deck or the zombie deck? One of the two. But it's not in that cycle. Oh, no, no, no. I like the red one. Yeah, the it red makes, one. Blow up some artifacts, make some, some treasures. Blow up some artifacts, make some treasures. Yeah, I guess. But it just like, They're still not good, though. Yeah. But I feel like there's a lot of cards that are almost there that people like write off immediately, and then you look back and you're like, yep. "This is super fun." And so you're just like, "I'm gonna pop this in the deck," and they do great. We talked about that in our upgrades deck, where they kind of just sit in your binder for a little bit until that perfect deck comes out from a yeah. new set. That's a thing um, too. Yeah. Or you go, "This has to be playable somewhere," mm -hmm. and you put it in your box or your stack or whatever, and then four months down the road, the deck comes out, and you go. I fucking knew it, right? Exactly. I saw the future. I knew now it's, me now history. it's playable. We find we finally broke. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Time sieve. <laughs> Lord. All right, Jace. Is there is there any 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 what? things out there that you use? Resources. I mean, he kind of asked both of us. You didn't really say much though. Well, I was really asking Derek first, and then I was gonna go to you. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Just like my wolf box. TCG player. TCG Ooh, player, yeah. for sure. My local card shop. I mean, sure, going through bulk at the card shop, you I can, do, I you do can like come across bulk. some hidden gems. You go through the bulk multicolor uncommons, and the deck comes together really fucking That is true. I love multicolor <laughs> uncommons. Multicolor cards in general, I like, which is what's, what's also making me like, want to like. abandon the 32 challenge. Yeah. There's so a bunch of uncommon commanders. Yeah. There's because a lot of all them. the uncommons in draft are signposts. Signposts. And yeah. fucking yeah. awesome. Anyway, so, Jace. Yep. What did we learn today, buckaroos? <laughs> it is Speak Like a Pirate Day when we're recording this. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. All the, it's September well, 11th. I'll tell you about that later. <laughs> it's September 11th, you fucker. <laughs> I guess they did Pirate Are we shit. done yet? Are the tower still? The tower is there. Jesus Christ. So what, Anyways, are we, what, what did we, we learn today, Jace? Building on a budget is okay. Yep. Don't feel ashamed to every, have a budget. In fact, everybody, everybody builds on a budget. budget. Yeah. yeah, everybody has a budget. But everybody has different budget yep. limits and lengths. Um, 
like I said, challenging, like setting specific challenges to mm-hmm. yourself or having stuff like Commander League. Yeah. Or, or an allowance. It helps build on a no. budget. Allowance. I need an allowance. 100%. Yeah. Saving yourself money. I'm, yeah. really bad. I'm really bad. Mm-hmm. Um, so as well as, as uh, budget alternatives to really pricey cards that might break sure. the bank, but instead save it. For sure, yeah. All you got to do is a little bit of research, find out what the card does. There's definitely budget alternatives out there. 100%. All right, well. So at the end of the day, we want to thank everybody for watching. This was Jace. This was Derek. This is Rafa, and Jake. if you enjoyed Jake. the video, consider liking and subscribing on YouTube and following on any other place you get your podcasts from. And comment down below in whatever form you that you can. For, no, God. <laughs> <laughs>